Hi everybody, my name is Bill Black at Spirit River. We're on the warehouse floor today and I'm here to show my friend Tom Andera a little bit about UV2. He knows some stuff about fly tying and fly fishing, uh, but he's by no means an expert. Actually, neither am I, but we've got this new product line out called UV2, which has ultraviolet fluorescent and ultraviolet reflectance uh, in it and um, it's pretty interesting new material. So a lot of people are asking questions about it. Hopefully this video will shed some light on it. So Bill, what's the difference between the UVF and UVR? Okay, well, uh, UVF is UV fluorescence, which we know in the fly tying industry that it lights up under a black light. Um, fluorescent colors? Yeah, it's fluorescent. You'll see it in street signs, you'll see workers uh, wearing it as far as vests, safety vests, that sort of thing. A lot of hunters use it. The funny thing about UVF is a friend of mine uh, who's got a fly shop in Portland took a black light into his shop at night and he uh, turned all the lights off and put the black light on and about half of the materials in there that said they were fluorescent really weren't. There was also an abundance of materials that were fluorescent that never said anything oh, about really? it. Yeah, so. That's kind of unusual, and in our industry, we use the word fluorescence kind of loosely, more like bright colors well, would be called yeah, fluorescence. That's, that's always what I thought, you know, you go to the wall and you see something that just pop, you know, just jumps out, you know, that's fluorescent. Yeah, no, not but true. But not necessary. No. Um, there's different types of dubbings out that they call them, you know, like a UV2 dubbing. Well, many of those, if not most of them, really are not truly UV, and that's the one thing we've done with our dubbing. Um, we've got quite a bit of dubbing back here, uh, and what we've done is we've taken um, uh, a core five or six colors, primary colors, and we've mixed those into the dubbing. Um, and those core colors have been UVF'd and UVR'd, uh, and so uh, they're going to kick off a lot more different light spectrums when you tie the fly. So this will usually contain anywhere from 10 to 20 or 25 percent of the UV2 dubbing enhancer, but we're not really disturbing the overall color of the, of the dubbing. So a pale morning done would be our normal batch of dubbing that we add the UV enhancer to and brighten it up. Now the other key thing when you're using a lot of these dubbings, you want to use either white thread, pearl thread, or silver tinsel, pearl tinsel, and you want to put that under the body and put your dubbing over the top. Don't make it too thick, but <clears throat> and you can even space it a little bit, depending on how you like it. But the idea is that the light will go into that dubbing or that body and come back out. And when it comes back out, it's collecting more of that <clears throat> uh, more light spectrum, colors. more wavelengths are coming back out of it. Multi-spectrum dubbings have been around for a long time, and a lot of people were doing it, and I really honestly don't think they knew that they were doing that. They were just trying to achieve a color. But really what they were doing was they were adding a whole lot of other wavelengths by mixing different colors together to come up with a, that the a key fish color. Can see. Exactly. Was that a so, double process? I mean, you, you're doing... We do UV. a double dye process, yes. Uh, <clears throat> we fluoresce all of our products, and that's relatively common. Um, the, that's a proprietary and secret process a lot of the dye companies won't let go. We know how to do it, but we've had to study it and look really hard to figure that out. Um, the UVR is a whole different story. Now, UV reflectance, the UVR is very, very common in the natural uh, animal kingdom. Uh, UVR is everywhere around us, but we can't see it with the rod and cones in our eyes. It's how a uh, bee will find a flower. Flowers have a lot of natural UVR. Um, mayflies have a lot of natural UVR in their wings. That's how a mayfly finds its mate. Yeah, you can um, see that. You know, I yeah, mean, exactly. The, the iridescent type of Correct. sheen you get off of it. That's right. the UVR, huh? Yeah. Um, most roosters, particularly like, say, a Chinese ringneck pheasant rooster, he's got all those bright, shiny colors. Mm. Well, he's got a UVR signature. And a female rooster can look at him and see how healthy he is by the strength of his UVR signature. Oh. And there, you know, he can... The other nice thing about UVR is uh, uh, it's very, very prominent. A lot of male nymphs have it, and male nymphs are prominent in streams more so than female nymphs, so you might as well use it when you're fishing. 
female birds don't have a lot of it. They're soft and muted. And the reason for that is they want to camouflage their young. Right, they want to be hidden. Right, so typically light that goes into a hen will be absorbed more than it will bounce back versus a rooster that's trying to, you know, get a hen to Show see it. Himself, yeah. Right, so, you know, another interesting one, um, a lot of times hawks will be up above a field and they'll see a field mouse uh, going across the field and that mouse is uh, letting out a little bit of UVR urine. There's a signature of UVR in his urine as he goes. So he leaves a line out in the field that the bird way, way up high can see that. And she knows either there's an animal or a hole there. So they'll come down and attack it, and, you know, either come up and hook hand or get something. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of cool different types of UV materials, and we're just getting started on this. We're going to have a lot more. But we've got some great big saltwater saddles like this. We call this uh, our UV uh, Super schloppen. Nice and long. Most of it's dark, uh, but it does have a strong UV signature. We're going to go in the back room and look at a couple plates, and I'll show you how stuff lights up and, and doesn't light up that's natural and stuff that we enhance. Okay. We've got a great line of um, UV Grizzly Soft Tackle, which is wonderful for buggers, wonderful for uh, even just little legs on nymphs and stuff like that. It really, yep. It's soft and really wiggles around. And there again, because it's soft, it absorbs that UVR dyes that we put into it a whole lot better than most stuff. So uh, we've got some hairs, we've got calf tails, because white calf tail is so prominently used on a lot of wings yeah. and a post and stuff like that. Uh, we've got whiting hackle here. Uh, and we've got, this doesn't really come sized, but these are all the, uh, the saddles. So you just have to look at the different packages to determine what size you want. And we try to mix it up a little bit, so you're getting 14, 16, 18, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, what else? Pheasant, which is, I'm sure you've never used pheasant in, in a fly. Uh, this is another cool one. We've, we've gone ahead and taken a, a biots, and we've UV'd them. And I personally love a dry fly, or even a nymph for that matter, or a merger that has a biot body. You know, you put your thread on. Um, and uh, your mylar, silver mylar tinsel on there, or pearl, put a little drop of super glue and run this up it. And man, you get that bounce back through it. Yep. So, uh, we do rabbit strips. Uh, look at that. We do regular dose tone, and I think we do a dose tone bard like this. Nice. Yeah. And I see you have some uh, <coughs> tip dyed ostrich. We do do tip dyed ostrich. Now this isn't UVR because if, if it was UV2, I shouldn't say UVR, oh, UV2, it would have that this type of packaging on it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of very unique materials like that. Uh, rabbit strips, um, here's some yarn. We do sparkle yarn, so you can use it for both wings and you can use it for uh, trailing shucks. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We've got a dry fly, our fine and dry dubbing. We mix UVR spectrum into it. That's what this is here. Yeah, we do uh, one of our real popular ones right now. Uh, we do is a seal X, which I believe is this one. And it's a really kind of more of a coarse dubbing. It's great to put in a dubbing loop. Um, I, you can actually just dub it straight if you want. But again, if you look at that real close, especially if you take it out in the sunshine, you're going to see a whole bunch of different colors. That's what you want. And you want it emitting that UV fluorescence and that UVR. Uh, we've got a nice, uh, a nice UV scud shrimp dubbing. Now, in this one, because everybody thinks that anything with pearl blue in it, they call it like uh, UV. There's a lot of other companies that market a UV dubbings, and it, the reason they do that is because they've got that pearl blue in it, which really doesn't make it UV. Um, I was advised we should probably put a little bit of that pearl blue in it. And actually, I think it kind of enhances and helps it as well. So you've got your normal dubbing, you've got your um, UV2 enhancer in this, and then we even put a little pearl blue uh, mylar in there, light blue. Now, you have two colors of enhancers too, right? Yeah, I do, actually. I was going to show you this. Uh, right here, we've got, we've got a UV light and a UV dark. And in our U, you can buy this. This is 100% UV. It's 
a little bit more money. You can take any of your W's that you've got, and you can, if it's a lighter color, you want to use this UV light. If it's a darker color, you want to use the UV dark. So you can take your stuff you got on your desk and Correct. turn it yeah. into the... Hopefully it's Spirit River stuff. <laughs> you can turn it into UV stuff so you don't, you know, you can try this right now. Um, you don't necessarily have to mix this with a light dubbing or dark dubbing. We just came out with this because this is the way we ended up blending our dubbings. It turned out best for us in order for us to make all this stuff. Seems like with the light you would maintain your lighter colors and put the darker and the darker. Correct, yeah. You Like if you take a pale morning dun and you mix UV dark into it, you're darkening up that pale morning dun. Yeah. But if you use the light, you're not upsetting the natural balance of that UV pale morning dun, that lighter color. <clears throat> so anyway, what, what we should probably do is go back into the back room and I'll show you some plates of materials. Okay. And we'll see if they fluoresce for the video. I don't know if they will or not, but let's try it. All right? All right. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I brought Tom back to show him what some of the stuff looks like under the lights. Um, these are panels that we make that we utilize both uh, the regular materials and the UV2 materials. The ones that are marked UV2 show the UV2, and these are like plain that haven't really been processed. Um, and again, there's still a lot of natural UVR in a lot of materials. As an example, Marabou has a lot of natural UVR. Uh, what I want to show you though is, as an example, we'll take this. This is probably one of the best here. And here's standard deer hair. Here's your UV fluoresced. Now it hasn't been UV2, just fluoresced. This is just UVR. It hasn't been fluoresced with a UVF. This is the combination both. Um, and I'll start flashing some lights around on here. I hope we can pick this up on the camera. Turn that on and I'll show This is a board uh, that shows the deer and elk hair and you can see the natural with no lights on it and then you can see the processed on the right which is UV2 and on the left which is not. And the bleached elk does pop to some extent. But boy look at the same piece of elk on the right. That's a lot of what fish see. This is a board of uh, rabbit, and the very left side is unprocessed rabbit, just normally normal rabbit and dyed rabbit. The second one over is UV fluoresced. The third row is uh, UVR or UV reflectance, and the fourth row is the process of UVF and UVR combined into UV2. These are the bucktails and calf tails. On the left are normal bucktails and calf tails. On the right are the processed ones. The fluorescent chartreuse does tend to pop under the lights on the left. On the right it pops even more. The white really pops. Those are the two stripes there in the middle. And then the calf tails on the bottom. Uh, one's a little bit more drab and the one that we uv 2 on the very bottom really shows off a lot more. Great for wings and stuff on dry flies and streamers. And there it is under normal uh, fluorescent lights, and you're going to see that you can't, that you can't, you can't yeah. tell any difference. And I notice that it doesn't damage anything. The fur all stays. Do you nice. can see you can see things pop even with just a regular UV light. See how it pops? Yeah. And it doesn't. See how it pops and doesn't. So anyway, uh, we're going to try to get this uh, on a film so that you guys can see it. Uh, we hope you um, use UV2. The other thing I want to add before we before we finish is we're not claiming this is an end all to everything. Okay, there's no way it would be, um, but it's just another tool in the toolbox. There's obviously on flies or lures. There's movement. There's uh, size. There's shape, and then you've got color, which is this is part of the color spectrums that you want to try to do. So. It's just part of the wheel of trying to get things to work for fish. So, anyway, Bill Black, Tom Mandera, we appreciate you visiting us today. Thanks for watching. Bye.